Okay, man. I would really like to curse at the start of this video, but I think YouTube will demonetize it. So I'm just going to say, holy hell, that was a basketball game. Going to be honest, man, my heart was beating. It's still beating after just a last five minutes, a last minute, a last 30 seconds where I thought my basketball world is crumbling uh, and I was getting ready to say nice things about the Heat and also lose my mind the other way. And then, okay, so there, three seconds left. Marcus Smart, turnaround jumper from like, I don't know, if it was a three, a long two-pointer, whatever. And then Derek freaking White. He had point one seconds or point two seconds on that offensive rebound. I mean, Derek White, that was unbelievable, man. And, you know, for a large chunk of this game, I was thinking, oh, the storyline of this is going to be, oh, the... The switching with Horford and Time Lord and whoever else on Jimmy, bringing two to Jimmy in the post. You know, he's missing a lot of shots. He's passing out of stuff. I mean, he made good plays throughout the game, but okay. You know, Bam's missing shots in, like, the post and everything. I thought that was going to be the story. And then later on, it's like, well, the heat zone just slowed the hell down of the Celtics. And, you know, a couple of rough plays. They tried to get somebody in the middle, but Horford's dropping the ball or Tatum's trying to drive, and then Bam is blocking him. You know, and all throughout it, it's like, oh, the Celtics are kind of falling apart on some little off-ball screen actions where, like, just dudes are getting free on the heat. You know, Caleb Martin or, uh, I mean, Gabe Vincent had some pull-ups on screens in this one, you know? And there were just, like, some random miscommunications with off-ball actions, even though they were guarding Jimmy and Bam well. But then it was like, you know, that kept the heat alive. And then it's, you know, through the heat grabbing just offensive rebounds and Jimmy eventually getting the mojo late there where he's just drawing fouls on Horford. And I mean, one of them was like, it was the switch, which they were doing most of the game, but Jimmy was able to get downhill enough beforehand to where he's drawing the foul. Then it's the crazy one where, bro, when when I saw when they came back from the commercial and it was a three point play, I was like, that's it. They're, they're done. That was it. And along the way, there were a few bad Celtics three-point attempts. There were some okay ones as well, but, you know, sometimes they're not going to drop. But there were definitely some frustrating ones, too. And yet, somehow, some freaking way how, they just forced the Game 7 after being down 0-3. I don't know what I'm supposed to say to that. This doesn't, this isn't a thing that you just plan on. I thought this thing was over after Game 3, and I was doing the whole, like, you know, let's talk about the Celtics offseason thing, and now it's Game 7 in Boston, and... Like, do I even try to discuss some of the little stuff of this game? I mean, I guess in a way I kind of did, but I just, I, I'm actually just kind of speechless, but I got to do this video. <laughs> okay, so Duncan Robinson has that insane three over Horford where the Heat ran a really smart action where it's like a Jimmy Bam screen and then Duncan Robinson basically just runs in between them and he's open and it was a good closeout from Horford and even so he makes it. And then he had like two of the most open threes you could ask for that would have just potentially been the dagger, really. And he misses those. Um, I remember a cool play where Jalen screened for Derek White and was able to get to the middle and get something over Gabe Vincent. I was like, ooh, that was a nice basketball play. We had a Marcus Smart draw on a three-point play on a face-up versus, I, I want to say that was Gabe Vincent. He had a turnaround jumper over, I think, Caleb Martin in the paint for one random play. Uh, he also got Caleb Martin on a pump fake that led to a couple of his threes. And, you know, look, Tatum, I mean, he was cooking a bit for mid-range in this game, and, and I do recall when I said at some point in this thing, like, hey, man, Tatum ain't really that great for mid-range because the percentages are below 40% for his career and all that, but okay, step back, long two-pointer over Caleb Martin, turnaround jumper at about the free throw line over Jimmy. Speaking of Duncan Robinson, there were a couple times when the Celtics went at him. One on that Marcus, I th kind of thought it was like a ghost screen for Tatum, and he just going at Duncan Robinson in a straight line. That's a three-point play. The Derek White pull-up three. Where Derek, where Robinson was switching on the screen, and there was like that little second of daylight. The second that shot went up, I was like, oh no, they're doing it again. Bad threes. And then it went in. I'm like, okay, cool, man. And if I could just have like another thing about Tatum, there was one play, it was like third quarter that I thought was hype. Maybe it was the fourth, where Tatum's got Jimmy in a one on one. Jimmy drives on him, and Tatum, or Jimmy misses the layup. And then Tatum's going the other way, and he gets like Caleb Martin in the post, and draws a foul on him. And then it felt like after that, we saw a lot more of the heat zone where, I mean, not even just the zone, right? But it was also like them just being aggressive on the ball. I mean, there was that play where they had Duncan Robinson and Gabe Vincent, like two to the ball on Tatum really high up on him. They forced a carry, which like how many times do you see that in the NBA, you know? But even if it wasn't forcing a carry, it was just like making the Celtics take extra time off the clock, which of course is when, you know, their offense gets into the their worst things. But yeah, man, that was unbelievable. And, uh, Okay, we got a Game 7 in Boston. <laughs> this, like, I don't know what the hell is going to happen in Game 7, okay? And for what it's worth, I actually think the Heat are going to make it, like, a good game. I, I think a lot of people are going to assume the Celtics are going to rout them. That's not what I believe is going to happen. But I feel like this game is going to be the one we remember the most from this ser series. Unless Game 7 is, like, otherworldly amazing.